Hey, welcome to this video by Nerdy Electronics. In this video, what we'll do is we'll take a Node MCU, we'll connect a temperature sensor to it to read the temperature. I want to read the temperature of my terrace. I will take this temperature in Node MCU, transmit it to AWS IoT, and then from AWS IoT, I will store it in DynamoDB. How I'll do it is I have the Node MCU and a temperature sensor that is LM35. The connections are the VCC pin of LM35 that is pin number 1 will be connected to V in pin of Node MCU. The ground pin will be connected to the ground pin of Node MCU and the output pin of the temperature sensor the LM35 will be connected to A0 pin. The LM35 sensor gives us an analog output of 10 millivolts per degree Celsius and this output is received in the V out pin. So we'll take this pin and connect it to the analog input of node MCU. Let us now move to the program where we'll read the temperature sensor and form the message that is going to be transmitted. And we'll also see the steps of configuring AWS IoT to forward the message to DynamoDB. Okay, so here I have the code. This is the same code which I had discussed in the series of posts where we connect node MCU to AWS IoT. We won't discuss this code in details here, just the important parts that are different. So we are reading a temperature sensor using ADC. So we have a function here that does it for us. It reads the analog channel, converts the value to temperature in Celsius and then returns this value. So in our main program that is in the loop, we have a function called form message to transmit. This is where we are forming the message which we want to transmit. Let's go have a look at this. So here we are taking the time to get the time and date stamp and then we are creating a message. The message has date and the date, the time and the time and then the temperature. And to get the temperature we are calling the function read temperature in Celsius which is this one. So when we call this we get the reply in of the temperature in degree Celsius here and then the message is formed and stored in data. Now in the loop function we are publishing the data to terrestem. Let's go ahead and flash this. Okay. Now that this is flashed let's see in the serial monitor whether it is transmitting data. Yes it is publishing data with the day, time and the temperature. Let's see whether we are receiving this in AWS IoT. We'll subscribe to this topic terrace tem and we are receiving the data here. To check whether it is actually transmitting or stuck at the point, let me change or cover the sensor with my hands so that the temperature increases and we can see that it is increasing here. See this. Okay, one more thing which I want to tell you is that this code will transmit the data every 10 seconds which we have mentioned here. Now that we are receiving the data in AWS IoT, we want to transmit it to DynamoDB. So let's go to Act and then Rules. Here we'll create a new rule and let's name the rule Node MCU to DynamoDB. And now we need a query statement. So what should be executed and what data do we want to write to this rule? So here we will have select temperature. From this is the topic to which we are publishing our data that is terrace temp. Select temperature from ter terrace temp where temperature is greater than 0. So this is our query. Now once this query is executed uh, we want to take some actions. So we will select the option insert a message into a DynamoDB table and then we will go and configure action. Here we want we need to mention the dynamo 
DynamoDB table where we want to insert the message. We'll click on create a new resource. This will take us to DynamoDB and we'll create a new table here. We'll name the table node mcu2 dynamo. We need a partition key. We'll mention the date as the partition key and add a sort key. We'll mention the time here. The time will become our sort key. That's it. We'll click on create. This won't take much time to get created. Okay, this is created now and we go back to AWS IoT and refresh the table names here. And then we can see the name here, node MCU to Dynamo. And you see here, these fields are auto-populated. That is the partition key and the sort key. Now, what do we want to store in this column? That is date. We want to store our date here. So we'll mention the dollar sign and in curly braces, we'll mention date. Similarly, in the time column, we want to store the time. So we'll mention the dollars time. And where do we want to write our message? The message which was extracted by executing the SQL query. We want to write it to a column named TMPR and the operation is going to be insert. We want to insert the message there. Now we need a role to attach to this policy, to this rule because AWS needs us to give explicit permissions to each service so that it can access any other service. So we need to give a role to grant AWS IoT access to DynamoDB. So we'll create a role. We'll name it uh, node mcu2 dynamo role and we'll create it. It auto creates everything and attaches the necessary policies and then we click on add action. Now everything is set. If we want, if we expect there can be errors, we can add error actions and route the data to let's say CloudWatch or something, but we don't want that right now. We'll go ahead and create this rule. Now let's check the MQTT broker again. Whether we are receiving the data yes we are receiving the latest data still and let's check it in dynamo db now so if we check items we have these entries here we have the temperatures so let's see in the serial monitor what is the data that is sent this is 31.26 degrees celsius So I will just cover the sensor with my hands so that the temperature increases. We have 32.87. Let's refresh this. We have 32.87 here. 21 hours, 57 minutes, 3 seconds. And that was the message and the time here. So our date, time and temperature are getting stored in this DynamoDB table. That is how we can push any data from our device via AWS IoT to DynamoDB. Now similar to uh, pushing to DynamoDB, there are many other options available in the rules. Why don't you explore them and tell us in the comments which rules you have used and how they operate. You can also send in your write-ups to nerdelectronics.com so that we can publish them under your names. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. Do not forget to like and drop a comment, they are huge motivations. Subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to never miss any update. Bye and see you soon in the next video.